Okay, gang, I know there's been a lot of additional elimination, and it might get be like I've been getting sick of it, but just stick with me. We have two more videos. This one's going to be a little bit longer, probably, and the next one's going to be shorter. So stick with me, persevere. We're almost done with this crap. Okay, so now we're going to move on to Esther's. And again, the behavior is going to be the same. A lot of additional elimination, but just a little bit different here. So there's really three things I want to talk about here. Ester hydrolysis, which is just going from your ester and then reverting back to the carboxylic acid. Something called transesterification, which honestly is the same as ester hydrolysis. And then I want to show you what happens when you attack an ester with a hard nucleophile. It's honestly the same as attacking it with uh, a hard nucleophile with an acid chloride and an acid anhydride. You pretty much know all this stuff, but we're going to go over it anyways. Okay, so the first thing I want to show you is I'm just going to draw a little ester right here. Right, This is just two carbons, a carbonyl, O, uh, oxygen, and then a methyl group. O, you know, O-methyl, CH3. If you remember back to the last videos on carboxylic acids, I said that uh, producing an ester from a carboxylic acid was a condensation reaction, right? So, if that's the case, if we have to remove water to get an ester from a carboxylic acid, if we put water back in, we should recover that carboxylic acid that we used initially. So let's draw the mechanism real quick, and then I'll show you that this, this is called ester hydrolysis because we're pumping water back in. This is really the next thing we're going to talk about also, uh, transesterification. Okay, so let's draw the mechanism. So esters are not as reactive as the two functional groups we've just talked about, right? The acid anhydrides and the acid chlorides. So we need to protonate them. We need to activate the carbonyl to get things going. So, oh, just to also make sure we are, in fact, in an acidic environment. First step. I'm going to protonate the carbonyl. And I am sure that you guys were already way ahead of me on that. Okay? Protonate the carbonyl. No big deal. Cool. Round a little bit. So now, right, carbonyl is activated. Let's enter in our nucleophile. Who's going to attack? Well, here it's going to be water, right? The oxygen and water. He's going to come in, attack the carbonyl carbon, and we need to kick electrons up. If you can already tell, this is the addition part of the addition and elimination mechanism. So I'm going to draw my tetrahedral intermediate. Hopefully this is not too fast for you guys. I'll recap what I'm done, right? So the OH comes from this right here, the kick up of the electrons. I have my water, positive charge on oxygen, and I didn't touch the O-methyl, right? So remember, we, want to, we don't see this O-methyl in our product. We see OH. We want this piece to stick around. We want this piece to leave. We're going to protonate here. We're going to deprotonate there, right? All of these things are just coming back, right? Concepts are building, right? So I'm going to just drop this H plus. I'll have a water pick him up. And then I'm going to protonate him with some H plus. Being a little lazy, I'm not going to draw hydronium. But remember, this is the plus H plus minus H plus step, right? Okay. OH, didn't touch him. He's still going this way. I now have another OH going out that way. And now we have a protonated O-methyl, a.k.a. methanol, right? So we formed our tetrahedral intermediate here. Let's collapse that sucker. And at the same time, we need a good leaving group to leave. Let's kick off methanol. Right? Positive charge on oxygen. OH right there. We produced methanol. And I'm just going to skip the cleanup step. You know, like, some water would come over and take off that H. And you know what, guys? This goes for everything. With the acid anhydrides we formed, with the uh, amides we've also formed, you can undo whatever functional group you got from a carboxylic acid by pumping water back in an acidic environment. Okay? So I'm going to erase this, and I'm going to show you guys by 
just changing this H2O to something like ethanol, propanol, we can do something called transesterification. And you know what? I'm going to draw the mechanism. It's the exact same thing. But give me one sec. So what you see up here, I haven't changed that much. Yeah, I changed the black line to blue. Sorry, I've been drawing in black. Lots kind of boring. But I kept my same ester, right? I still have this O-methyl uh, ether part in the carbonyl. But instead of water up here, I changed it to ethanol. And all you can see is instead of a carboxylic acid, I just have a different ester. So I'm going to kind of go through this mechanism a little faster because it's everything we've been doing. All right, so remember, esters are not crazy reactive like acid chlorides, acid anhydrides. So we need to protonate them first, right? So let us protonate the carbonyl, something we know all too well by now. Protonated and activated. Now we need to enter our nucleophile. In this case, it was water last time, it's ethanol this time. Electrons come over and attack the carbonyl carbon. Electrons swing up on the oxygen. We're going to form our tetrahedral intermediate. OH goes up to the left, not touching this O-methyl. And I now have O, E, T with an H and a positive charge. Remember, we need to protonate the things we want to get rid of. We want to deprotonate the things we want to keep, right? So we need to protonate him. We want to deprotonate him. So I'm going to drop this H+. plus. Somebody's going to grab it. I'm just going to drop it. And at the same time, we're going to grab H plus here. Right, something like water would pick that up, right? This is the plus H plus minus H plus step. Okay? So once we've done that, I didn't touch the OH over here. I now have OET over here with no positive charge. And now, just like last time, I have methanol down here, right? A good leaving group, stable on its own. So what are we going to do? We're going to collapse the tetrahedral intermediate, right? Reform double bond. That is going to be the driving force for methanol to peace out and leave. What that looks like is that we now have reformed our double bond on oxygen. He has an H on him that will definitely go away. And now we have O ethyl while well, having formed methanol down here. And somebody's going to pick up that H. And our final product looks like this. So it's called transesterification because all we did was we just made a different ester, right? So you can do that with anything. Okay, I hope you realize that this mechanism was exactly like the ester hydrolysis we just did. But instead of ethanol, we just used water. Okay, gang. Whew, a lot of additional elimination. I want to show you what happens when you attack an ester with a hard nucleophile. We'll call it quits for esters. We'll go straight through amides, and then we are done so with this series. Okay, gang. So like I said, we're going to do an ester reaction with a hard nucleophile and call this video quits. Okay. So let me just, let me just show you, instead of a Grignard, because we've done that before, let me just show you what happens. All right. So we have an ester like this, right? This will be the ester part. Let me show you what happens when you do a first step of LAH, right? Remember, lithium aluminum hydride, and clean up with acid, right? Remember, this is a source of H minus, and this is our only source of H minus where it's a hard nucleophile, right? Okay, what do we get? We know we get double attack, but let's see it at work. So, I'm going to draw my ester down here. So we're going to go in with H minus. We're going to attack our carbonyl carbon and kick up electrons on our carbonyl oxygen. We have O minus. I didn't touch the OET. And now we have a hydrogen. 
Okay? Now remember, this is our tetrahedral intermediate. So what we're going to do is we're going to swing electrons down, collapse the tetrahedral intermediate, and remember, we're in a basic environment. There's no H+. So I can't protonate this leaving group, but the thing is, these nucleophiles, whether it be a Grignard or a hydride reagent, are so reactive that it's actually okay to kick this leaving group off. It's not great, but it's going to work. It's going to happen. Reform our carbonyl, and now we just have a hydrogen, right? Because we kicked off this ethoxide, which is okay. It's okay. All right. Well, remember, just like before, we just formed a carbonyl, right? In this case, it's an aldehyde. We're going to do double attack. Esters do double attack with hard nucleophiles, just like acid chlorides and acid anhydrides. So, bring in another H minus, attack, electrons kick up. Nothing new. O minus, even H. We have two H's, right? Because we attack twice. And then just a cleanup step. Okay. So I want to raise, so this mechanism, you've seen it before in a different form, but I want to raise an interesting point. Okay. So if you've actually ran this reaction in real life, I want to show you kind of the percentages of product you would get. You would probably see something around this. You would see the product we just drew mechanistically down there, this alcohol. And you'd also see this you would see a lot of leftover reactant. You'd see a lot of leftover ester. And I'm actually going to tell you, you probably see percentages like this. You probably get 50% of your product of this and 50% of your product unreacted. And let me explain. So we start out with an ester, right? Not the most reactive carbonyl in the grand scheme of carbonyls. So when the first ester is attacked, whether it be a Grignard or a hydride ion from LAH, right, you know, we get the tetrahedral intermediate and it collapses. Every first attack produces an aldehyde. So when you attack one given ester and it becomes an aldehyde, the next decision that nucleophile has to make, another hydride ion has to make, is do I attack this aldehyde or do I attack an ester? And the answer is aldehydes or ketones are more reactive than esters. So for every, so it will attack the aldehyde over a different ester. So what I'm trying to say is, I don't think I'm saying it that well, sorry about it. For every ester you attack fresh, you're going to make a ketone or an aldehyde. And that will get attacked over a different ester. So for every ester you attack initially, you're going to consume two nucleophiles, right? Because attack to the ester, then attack to whatever carbonyl you make. So half of your half of your nucleophile, or you know, two nucleophiles are gone for every one ester. So all of your nucleophile is going to be taken out by half of your initial reactant, is what I'm trying to say. Hopefully that made sense. Okay, gang. So that does it for esters. We'll attack amides and call it a series.